Hi, this is David Elfner and Austin Monty for Brews and Reviews 1776. We have a very special beer that we will be uh, reviewing tonight. It's from the New Belgium, the, the New Belgium Beer Company. It's called the Hemper HPA. It's quite off the beaten path of beers. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to giving it another try today. I've had it in the past, and I've got to say. Uh, I mean, you haven't had it. I no, yet. I actually no, have. You have also had it. First so. time I had it was at um, Riverside Market and Plantation. Oh, very interesting. I didn't realize that. Seven percent alcohol by volume, and uh, it might have hemp in it, but it doesn't actually uh, have any uh, psychoactive qualities to it. But it does smell a good way. But it does smell pretty interesting. Put it this way: It doesn't smell like it. It doesn't taste like it smells. It smells hoppyish, hoppy as fuck. It, 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 it doesn't. It smell smells hoppy. very hoppy. It, do, it, it, it smells it, like it, weed, but it does. It goes down smoother than it tastes. Exactly. It, you, you, it's really an IPA crossed with with a with a hemp. It's made with hemp with with, with hemp and hops, uh, which are in the same family, of course. Hoppy so, hemp. <laughs> Hoppy Hems. That's right. Seven uh, percent alcohol by volume. It's a decent beer. Uh, really, really smooth, and uh, we can't wait to uh, to try it once again. Well, shout out to Civil Society. Great job on the uh, pop glasses. I was there a few couple of weeks, about a week or so ago. Hope is another great one out there. And, uh, back to the. Uh, HBA from, uh, from New Belgium. Now, Fat Tire is actually well. When, a good one. when we think about the New Belgium uh, company, you know, Fat Tire is one of those one of those beer beers. It's really, 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 really one of those uh, beers that you can uh, you can have quite a bit of. It's not too not too Ooh. strong. Oh my. And smells, uh, it smells it's, a go, it's a really a go-to beer for for many out there. I mean, oh, it's it's incredible. I mean, uh, when you smell this beer, uh, it smells like nothing that I've ever had uh, before, uh, nothing that I've known before. Uh, and uh, I can imagine some individuals out there who partake uh, often. You know, they. And he's smoking of the age. <laughs> but uh, they, they might be uh, disappointed to hear that uh, there's limitations to this beer. Just to the beer. Uh, but it, it really is something else. It may smell like uh, your favorite it, plant, but it doesn't. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It does not give you the same. Well, it does not give you the same side effects as the plant, but depending on your. Tolerance. Hey, hello, Terrence. Well, certainly. Well, well, of course, certainly it'll make you feel like uh, that, that that feeling that you get when, when you do smell smell that smell, that smelly smell, that smell smelly in the air. The smelly smell, that smell smelly. <laughs> uh, say that ten times fast. That smelly smell, that smell smelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try, but... Uh, you know, little SpongeBob reference right there. Uh, <laughs> the gang is definitely better. Um, yeah. So this beer, um, when you smell that the the smell in the air, uh, just picture it in a beer. And it's a glorious. Here you are. Of course, I have my Sam Adams uh, taster glass that I received three years ago when I went to the brewery. So a good good moment to break this baby out. Yeah, it definitely doesn't. It definitely doesn't taste like it, uh, like it smells. But you know, the the taste is still distinct enough. It really still is. I mean, you're not ta you're, you're talking about um, a muted but present hop flavor. It's mild. You have uh, this uh, this uh, bit of a off sweetness to it, but. But it, it, it honestly um, is enjoyable. Um, I, I, I can imagine how if, if someone were to drink this, that 
isn't quite used to it, it might take some time to uh, to get used to it. So it depends on the perspective, um, uh, especially on the, on the taste. It really doesn't taste like a beer that you normally would, too. It doesn't even taste like it smells. It it, it and, smells hoppy as hell, but when you taste well, it, it smells it, pungent. Smells, it, it smells pungent. Well, it, well, smells, I, it pungent. smells pungent. It, I would not I would not consider this beer a hoppy flavor, a hoppy scent. The only um, reason I think. The only reason I say hoppy is because of the HBA. Well, you, you, you look at you look at the PA and it stands for the the, the pale ale. So uh, it, it does have a um, a presence of hops, but I, on. but I, I think that the hops are being uh, overridden by that that hemp flavor. That the hemp flavor is is really masking what I believe is otherwise a. A decent hop presence. I'm not exactly sure how many IBUs are in here, but if I had to say, it's probably around 65. Um, that that that. Uh, hi, mom. It seemed like you had a great time in Atlantic City. <laughs> Cheers. And uh, Key West, actually. But uh. Oh shit! Wait. Oh. Uh, All right. Wrong, Don. All right, Don. Walk one. <laughs> uh. uh <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I'm friends with two dogs. I'm sorry. So the, the name of this beer is the Hemper, the HPA. Hemper HPA. It's a, uh, a pale ale infused with hemp. I mean, it also has hops in it, but it has that, that, um, astringent, pungent, uh, weed smell, weed smell to it, um, without any of the psychoactive side effects, of course, that we uh, aforementioned uh, not that long ago, uh, but uh, it's it's really um, I I liked it. Um, it's not it's quite off the beaten path even when it comes to the flavor. Where did you first try this beer? Uh, I tried this beer at Legends Tavern in uh, Sunrise. Not a GQ scrap house. No, that that was the third time I tried. Third time? Mm -hmm. Oh, I actually cool. tried it with uh, the other third of our booze review team, Daniel. And then oh. Sunrise uh, on 420, they had it on 420. That was the first time that they had it. It was on 420, and it's no surprise that this was the day that they unveiled it, or around that time. It was actually out for a couple of days before that, four or five days in lieu of the uh, the 420. <laughs> so I, I found it. I found it quite uh, fitting for a day like that too partake in uh, a beer that can get as close, as close as you can, Oh, if and possible. Terrence, by the way, we purchased this lovely little uh, beverage. I purchased it earlier this afternoon at uh, Total Wine. So uh, if you get a chance, check out the uh, Total Wine website or whatever your local source is. And, uh, Check it out. And, and this beer is not really that that bitter, would you say? I mean, it's, no. if you you would consider it more like a a, a semi sweet, a uh, a bit of an off sweet. It has this. Um, it definitely has this uh, roasted sweetness that is certainly certainly been. Uh, it's a weird sweetness, and it's hard to describe because it's not characteristically uh, what we're looking for in beers. Uh, but it's kind of a beer you can uh, enjoy once in a while. Uh, not really my go-to beer since I've only had it about five times. But uh, it's it's really a, um, a treat uh, and something uh, something different. Uh, something that I, I felt needed to uh, have its own review. Actually, uh, funny enough, it's the first time that we reviewed a beer that we had originally uh, just posted on our page. We just, I took a picture of it, and I just, I wrote, I wrote, I wrote something up about it, and uh, yeah, we know that Susanna. It's really one like of the pot the second you open the bottle. That's <laughs> really one of our. That's one of our favorite smells. <laughs> is it, it is okay? Boom. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, it, you know, it's it, it's a really an acquired uh, scent and acquired um, taste. Well. The thing is uh, that the taste, as we said before, uh, doesn't match the smell. Um, so you're going to probably want to hold your nose uh, before you drink this beer if you're not used to the rancid smell. 
<laughs> not, well, not that we. <laughs> well, not that we have to. Because <laughs> we're used to the real life. <laughs> we're used to it in some way. Um, but uh, it's just kidding. But um, uh, yeah, um, but it it, ta- it tastes decent. I wouldn't I wouldn't consider this a a go to, but uh, it's something that I would mildly enjoy once in a blue moon, and um, I think it's going to reflect in my overall rating when it comes to this beer. Not not one of those beers that I would rate, in, you know, above a four. I think I would give this a four twenty, four point two zero. That, that that that's funny and <laughs> come on. Um yeah, I, I know I know. Um well, it doesn't well it but when t- it comes to, believe it or not, this, hard is gonna, to this actually t- how to compare. Yeah. It it smells like weed. It smells hoppy as hell. But it does it tastes way better than it smells. Exactly. For someone who's not used to that kind of scent, it, it'll smell bad. We think it smells great, but um, and, it yeah. goes down smooth. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you'd be you'd be surprised. It, it's pretty. It's pretty uh, mellow uh, aftertaste all through and through. It, it has the, the sweetness that that comes with a with a slight a slight bitterness. From the hops and from from the hemp, but but really the hemp is not uh, incredibly present on the nose. It's still I'm, I'm getting a lot of the sweet malts that that I look for in in a pale ale. They're not strong malts, but they're but they're just enough to where it's interesting. Uh, it's 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 not it's not a skunky flavor. You know, I, I look at uh, other beers like Heineken uh, that have uh, that this these skunky characteristics. Uh, Corona and Heineken, they 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 drink as as um, as skunky as they smell sometimes, uh, and that could be due to a, a variety of, of reasons. But uh, but this beer uh, certainly uh, has a uh, inequality of uh, of flavor to uh, scent. We we like to look at uh, beers that that have the, the matching scent of flavor, like the one that we had the other night. The um, we had the maple uh, bacon coffee porter last week, right? Uh, last week, and that beer was one of the beers that it smells like maple. It tastes like maple. It's maple, uh, but yeah, Corona Corona is certainly has this uh, ever present skunky t- uh, flavor and uh, scent. Uh, I would consider it Hello, almost, almost as close, honestly. Uh, but this is uh, definitely an iconic. Um, an iconic uh, scent. It was meant to to be this way. I, I feel, um, but um, if you can get, like I said, if you can get past that scent, you know it can it can be enjoyable. I would drink this from the bottle, in that case, or from a very um, a very thin uh, uh, champagne glass because you know we look at champagne the same several. way sometimes, which which we do, but we're not. We're gonna say those other time. Uh, but if you didn't like the smell of it, you know, there's a reason why that champagne is in a very, you know, narrow glass because uh, it's not it's not really meant to be, you know, uh, smelled before you, you drink it. It's not a beer or wine. Not You don't care about the... It's just bubbly alcohol. It's just, it's just bubbly alcohol. And if you didn't like the smell <laughs> of this beer, I, I, totally, I totally get it. And uh, you know, it, might, it might be... Uh, might be worth it to, to put it in a in a thin glass or drink it from the bottle. I I, I see it as this way uh, from from that uh, from that vantage point. Um, but overall, I I'll I'll, I'll part the side uh, and your four Sorry about that, everybody. and your four point two uh, score, which is apropos. I'm gonna go with a three point seven five, three point eight. You know, it's 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 just um I. I, I certainly, I certainly feel that it's uh, that, that it has its place. Next time you guys are total one, check to see if they have the good people. Muchacho. We were chacho. I'll look for it. Oh, I 
had it the uh, I have it though I can't find it but when I find it oh wait here it is uh, oh yeah okay uh, this is a we'll be doing this one some other time but this is the uh, Goose Island Bourbon County brand barley wine I had picked wow. up this afternoon. Now, now we're now we're talking, and it's now it's talking. ice cold. Perfect drinking temperature. Absolutely. So uh, just to just fine. We'll save yeah. this for another time. And uh, those beers get better when it gets warmer, as well. Not to mention. I'm glad I went to Total Wine today. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, right now we have the World Cup going on, and uh, and so I have been uh, talking about this uh, recently. Um, uh, the four uh, the four countries in it are now Belgium, France, England, and Croatia. And I am hard at work trying to find a Croatian beer. French or, or Belgian beer? French, Belgium, uh, English, and... Uh, French, English, Belgium, and Croatia. Um, so I'm going to be on the hunt in Total Wine to look for some uh, really interesting foreign beers. To and the hunt! <laughs> to, to the hunt! <laughs> and, uh, but, but great. Uh, and uh, we're going to put both of those beers up against each other uh, and see which, which, which one uh, stands out the best uh, and learn something new about uh, different countries uh, and their beers. And that's not the American adaptation on, on that, that country beers. That's actually coming from that country itself originally uh so we're going to do our best to um to locate them and uh kind of bring a, a special world cup uh multi-country review i know that we're usually uh looking into uh, independent american breweries hence the name uh 1776 uh but you know this is going to be one of those moments where we uh we kind of go outside our I reach. I've been to one soccer match. What was the soccer match we went to? Oh, was it Peru and Croatia, right? Was it Croatia? Yeah. It, it was Peru and Croatia. It was Peru and Croatia. So dolphin, represent, dolphin representative trying to get me to buy season tickets. So that, exactly, we yeah. We got invited, so we went. And I got to admit, the, the fans there, they were passionate as hell. And that was, you know, it was so soccer or sucker, as my friend Rick likes to allude to sucker. <laughs> um, a fan showed out, man. I got to remember the, how packed the stadium was. It was packed. The last time I saw that stadium, that the last time I saw a Hard Rock Stadium that packed was when Miami played Notre Dame last year. Yeah, yeah, and that, and you know that, that that makes a bunch of sense. You know, you're in Miami. Uh, this is really a multicultural um, city. So uh, when you're looking at soccer, I'm not, I, I, I suppose I'm not surprised. I, I really am not. So uh, uh, definitely uh, that's uh, behind the, uh, the determination to, uh, to do this special uh, beer review either uh, tomorrow or Thursday. I know Thursday is going to be really late, but uh, scheduling uh, – is in tough order right now, but I uh, will try to get. Uh, Which is why I would suggest tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Uh, was, that way, uh, we can just knock it out. Well, knock it out ab absolutely. Uh, mo Monday would would be a good bet, and uh, it's definitely up up for probability. Um, but uh, definitely uh, looking forward to watching uh, the soccer games and. Uh, well, actually, I might not be able to get to watch soccer games, but uh, seeing seeing the, the highlights and uh, watching the the fans uh, who who love soccer, uh, especially the English soccer, like uh, like Nick uh, Keith, um, go go England, and uh, yeah. Uh, anything else you'd like to add about the uh, the beer? Um, I think we basically covered all of we, our. I think we did all the bases. I, yeah. I guess. Um, so I wanted to introduce a beer that uh, not many people know about. Um, if you know Guinness, um, you, you might know this beer, and I hadn't seen this beer for a, a very long time until 
about a month ago, and it's called the, the Guinness Foreign Extra Stout. And uh, if you like Guinness, then you might... Should be in there somewhere. It is. It's, it's behind here. Don't want to grab it. Here it is right here. And it's a oh, very, it's, 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 yeah, it's very, it. it's very weird, but yeah, we, 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 we bought it. Thank you, Terrence. So I, I, I just wanted to quickly uh, preview this, uh, this amazing beer. Uh, this beer is not like uh, the original Guinness. It's, uh, it's the, the original Guinness is 4% alcohol by volume and is, uh, in my mind, a very thin beer. Uh, but this beer right here, and it had been seven years since I had seen this beer. I wasn't even able to enjoy this beer last time I had seen it. And now it's back, and it's seven and a half alcohol by volume. It's a, a very rich stout, and I was absolutely blown away. I had never tried a Guinness like this before. So um, we're going to probably, at some point, uh, Review this beer. Uh, I don't think you've ever had it, so. Uh, Dude, we did like a week and a half ago. Okay. When Sorry. we when we were all eating dinner uh, at the oh, table. Oh, I, I, oh, I, I, I thought that um, that. Um, I we dude I. Okay. Cracked open the bottle. Okay. Poured two glasses, one for me and one for you. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> when we were, when we were eating delicious Anthony's coal fired pizza. True. Chew, my bad. Shout out to Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza. Shout out to five. Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza. They may be just a tad bit pricey, but their food is well worth it. Their ribs are to die for. Their coal oven roasted ribs are to die for. My go to order there is large ribs, large yep. wings, large pepperoni with triple pepperoni and a, maybe a small it, it, it's, it's, um It's all necessities for every party uh, that we've. Almost every party that we, we that we had, it seems. But a lot of them, yeah. A lot of them, I lost count already. I lost count. So many. We've lost count. <laughs> at the bottom of every bottle. But uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, going to be something that uh, we're going to that uh, that I, I'm pleased to talk about. It's in stores for I'm not sure how long. And uh, if you like Guinness uh, and you like something better, then Joe, um, check it out sometime. It's not uh, bad. Oh, and if any of y'all ever get a chance, uh, shoot up to um, Civil Society Brewing out in Jupiter. Or down in Jupiter, depending on where you live. Uh, David, do you have anything positive to say about Civil Society? I mean, you've had a few of their beers. Um, oh, well, well. One of my uh, favorites. You know, Paul? we, yeah. Uh, we had talked about uh, many. We we had actually uh, did uh, me. done reviews that. about uh, their beers, and uh, they make uh, great IPAs. Um, most of their beers are IPAs. They most, had a most few, of their uh, beers are IPAs. Uh, and a couple of Pilsen, oh, correct? At least one Pilsen. Of course, uh, you know uh, they make uh, great East Coast IPAs um, that. I, you know, uh, hey David. Um, and Hello, David. They, they, they you know, uh, some of you talk about civil society and then their IPs, but they're not a a typical um, brewery that makes IPAs. They're not in the Sierra Nevada mold. Uh, and I, I talked about uh, you know the difference between West Coast IPAs and East Coast IPAs so many times. Uh, what to look for in one? Uh, what, what kind of benefits for you know someone who who doesn't usually drink IPAs? Uh, Civil Society uh, makes uh, IPAs that I, I personally like. Uh, they're like the Dogfish Head uh, IPAs. There, we they're, just had that uh, two nights ago. The yeah. Dogfish Head right. ninety. The, the Dogfish Head ninety. You have a a heavy. You have a heavy uh, uh, backbone of of malt uh, with that uh, the high hop volume as well, but. Both flavors um, uh, actually work together to uh, make a very satisfying beer. You're not you're not getting uh, slammed with uh, so much hops at, uh, at one time like those Sierra mm. Nevada beers do. Uh, so I, um, I I appreciate that. Uh, even though I consider myself a hop head, uh, I honestly uh, prefer. Both hop heads. Of course, uh, I, I view myself uh, as someone that. Um, 
tend to appreciate uh, the the malt that the, the sweet malt that I use, and I'll get stouts and porters most of the time because of that. But uh, enjoying one of these IPAs that have this uh, strong balance of of intense uh, flavors on both sides, it really comes together to make a. Uh, Great music, and so far um, you have civil society uh, leading the way. I think in in this day uh, for what you can do to an IPA, but of course pulp is a little bit different. Pulp is a uh, is a orange uh, it's a it's an orange wheat ale. So uh, this is this was actually phenomenal, and um, you know mixing uh, bright flavors with uh, with wheat beers. Uh, that's been a practice that goes uh, for for a while. Actually, it's not out of the ordinary, uh, but uh, it's not something that I have every day. A orange uh, and, and a wheat beer at yeah, once. So uh, this was a great beer. It's a great sessionable beer at six percent alcohol by volume. Uh, I could probably um, enjoy Drink these for quite a for quite a bit. Drink quite uh, a few. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're um. It's very, it's very light, uh, crisp, uh, definitely refreshing. Um, it only six point three percent. Only six point three percent. Very, uh, very refreshing. Uh, not, you know, you don't have these, uh, these super uh, sweet flavors mm. that uh, that are are so uh, overwhelming, um, and uh, that that you might not be able to have more than one, but. Uh, yeah, this beer is certainly, um, I certainly recommend this from, uh, from that brewery and uh, checking it out sometime. Uh, I'll, I'll shoot up there one, one time. Uh, There's also a um, Das Beer Garden just right down the road. Oh, Beer Garden. That That uh, is, is fantastic. There's at least two or three places in that plate, in that area to get good beer. Civil Society being my favorite. And the uh, Roger Dean Stadium, right in back. Oh, and and, and that and that also leads into my uh, other one other thing I wanted to say. Um, I, well, of course, I went to uh, Sebastian the other day to uh, Paradolia Brewing Company. Shout out to Paradolia. Uh, thank you guys for a uh, an amazing experience. Uh, you guys were very uh, hospitable. You. Uh, you, um, Lee, you gave us a tremendous uh, uh, walk through the back at your brewery, uh, at your brewing tanks. Your uh, the way your process is. Uh, I have the video, and I'll post the video soon. Uh, and um, I wanted to also give a shout out to a little known brewery at the on the side of one of the Marlins Park garages. There's a new there's a new brewery. Uh, uh, new, yeah. Like new, new. Yep, I, I've completely surprised Austin tonight. <laughs> I've completely. Yeah, this might be the only one reason why he go to a Marlins game this year. Ah! To go to that brewery. You know, we coming around, baby. Ready? What? You got Florida. Hey, exactly. Exactly. Hey, hey, <laughs> when, just, when, hey, when the Bronx I bombers think we just have something. Here. When the Bronx bombers come to town, we're gonna fillet some fish. <laughs> All right. Hey, 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 and as long as we go to that place and we we have a good time. I'll be okay with getting at my ass. You know, because well, you're you're a Marlins fan. You've been used to that for the past few years. <laughs> but uh, definitely uh, look forward to uh, actually showing you that that brewery uh, right next to to Marlins Park, which honestly I don't think anyone knows about because no one's really going to the Marlins Park this year. So we, uh, I'll be we happy to to, to, to give you a uh, little. Walkthrough of the uh, the nice place. They're actually looking towards getting a beer garden in the back of in the back of their uh, brewery as well. So uh, that's going to be even greater uh, since you brought that up a second ago. And uh, we're going to bring you that in August, right? The, the yep. Marlins are coming uh, to play. Well, the Yankees are coming to play the Marlins in August. So we look forward to that and uh, many other things uh, coming forward. And um, absolutely. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, this was the uh, Hemper review, and happy to show you that. Hemper beer. with the little, inter little uh, 
and um, side introduction and then those side side introductions like the pulp the pulp the Guinness uh, where were they covering all the bases in we covered in, at least three in one video uh, we covered three beers but we're only think, trying one I it's think like, I think we almost need to partition our uh, we have to put like partitions in in uh, the the video where it says partition. we talked about this here we talked about that here like what, but, which uh, which beer is the priest. <laughs> oh, way to go! Way to go! I I did not expect you to throw out a, a, a. Well, you're a mentioning. Show. Well, you're mentioning partition. So uh, like, uh, in terms of bookmarks, God. Well, well you said partition, not bookmark. <laughs> I it didn't exactly come to my mind right away. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Unedited, unscripted, <laughs> uncut. Yeah. And that's what the priest said as well. <laughs> <laughs> Is he even that? Okay, get out of the fun right now. <laughs> oh, oh All right, that guys. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure talking with you guys tonight. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for joining in. Have a fantastic evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Cheers. Cheers.